What is good everyone? Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Um, it's pretty rainy right now in the East Coast and me and Shorty, this is Shorty. Um, we just came back from the gym and uh, hopefully I'm not too out of breath. Um, many of you guys know me from my YouTube videos or um, the work I have done for uh, street culture. But if this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Benjamin and don't worry, I'm not here to talk about YouTube or fashion. I wanna share with you guys something that has been lingering in the back of my mind for a very, very long time. So I came to the US 15 years ago through a sponsorship from my aunt. Uh, my aunt owns a nail salon and she, her wish is to bring our whole family over to the US. So you can probably guess that my family wasn't like rich. Um, we weren't poor, but we came from a working class uh, family. I grew up in South Jersey and I went to a majority white school. I was uh, one of the three Asians that was in my class, not even one of the three Vietnamese that was in my class. The only time that I get to meet Vietnamese people was when my uncle would uh, grocery shop at Cho Vietnam in uh, Philadelphia. You know, so 15 years went by pretty fast and I quickly realized and questioned why are Viet's scattered all over the place? It isn't used to be like this, but I guess uh, from all the drama from our uh, previous generation, your parents' family had with another family or văn hóa nói so, or you know, just coming from different regions of Vietnam, you know, the typical north side, south side shit. And trust me, it's not our fault. Uh, it's basically like a string that you cut and no one bothers to uh, tie it up again. Let's be honest, if you've lived in the US long enough, you probably don't hate someone if they're just coming from a different region back home, especially when you have to deal with all the racism, all the, you know, stereotypes and being called Ching Chong almost all the time. You don't really care about, you know, who is from the north side, who's from the south side, who's from the central. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have, um, how much expensive shit that you put on, what car you drive, you're still the underdog being Vietnamese in America. Basically what I'm saying is that if you're only strong individually and you're not united as a community, you're basically the underdog of an underdog. An example is Chinese people are considered underdogs in America. You know, white people still look at them a certain way. They still don't get the respect doesn't matter, you know, how much money they have, um, how their social status are. And we, the Vietnamese, we rely heavily on Chinatown. You go there for boba, you go there for dim sum, um, you may even get a haircut in Chinatown. And one of our biggest community, uh, Little Saigon in Houston, is just a west side of Chinatown but you don't speak Chinese and you don't consider yourself in the Chinese community that fucked with me for a long long time and even right now when someone asks me where are you from I'm still hesitant to answer because I know for a fact 90% of them don't even know Vietnam is even a country that exists. The rest 10% who knows, they either know us for pho or they know us for the Vietnam War. It could be lonely sometimes, you know? Um, I mean, me and Shorty will still live a great life. Um, we're still pretty good uh, individually. And I know every one of you is crushing it career-wise. You guys are killing it individually. I know that. But when it comes to having a community to fall back on, we really don't have a community. You know how hard it is to date a Vietnamese human in the US? 
my cousin just turned 19. She's pretty, um, she has a great personality, and she struggles to find a Vietnamese boyfriend. When you know back home, I know for a fact, guys would be crushing so hard on her. Even myself, I adopted to the American culture. I love burgers, I love tacos, I love pasta. You know, I love all the American culture things, but deep down inside, my comfort food is still noodle soup, like pho, pho ga, pho bò, bún bò huế, bánh mì, you know, all that. And I'm still attracted to the Vietnamese beauty. And with all of those thoughts in the back of my mind, I decided to use the little influence and the voice that I have to create a group, a community, and name it 3 r one B, which stands for three region, one blood. So every time you guys think about our community, whether you're from Mien Bắc, Mien Trung, Mien Nam, it doesn't matter. Remember, we all share the same blood. And like I said, I can only use my voice and the little influence that I have to create this community. And this community is going to be life by itself with the contribution of you guys. You guys can share whatever you want. Um, you guys can self-promote yourself uh, where you're from in the US, uh, the struggles that you have being Vietnamese in uh, the US, and you know, anything that you want to share with other Vietnamese. And I really hope our community is going to be strong. We're going to be healthy. We're going to stay connected. We're going to keep crushing it. And yeah, we heavily need a graphic designer to help us make a cover for this group. So uh, hopefully someone will um, contribute a cover so that we kind of look more legit. <laughs> All right, let's start fresh as millennials stay united, stay together, and don't be like me, waiting for 15 years for someone to create a community or a place that I can meet other Vietnamese. We're gonna be the one who will build this community. And trust me, it won't take long until you find a Vietnamese friend who shares the same passion, same interests, who lives around your area and become friends, hanging out. I really, really hope to see you guys in the group and have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.